do you have an online account with Namecheap, a domain name registrar? Would you like to take a few precautions to keep that account from being hijacked? Well, stay tuned. I will take you through three steps that you can take to prevent that from happening. Now let's get started. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about implementing two-factor authentication with Namecheap.com. If you haven't heard about them, they're a domain name registrar that's putting your security first. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on that subscribe button now and enable notification. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. Now, here's where we're going to go through with getting Namecheap set up. First, we're going to go a SMS message then we're going to show soft token and then hard token soft token if you haven't dealt with two-factor before that's an app running on your phone there's a little bit of a registration process that we'll have to go through these are two different hardware tokens now to give you a little bit better picture this is a little closer view of one of the tokens now this is from a company called thetis it is both a hardware token and it links via bluetooth and this is going to be helpful if you have a smartphone you're using this with because I don't know about you but have you ever found a USB port on a smartphone I don't think so now this is another player in the game now this is a complimentary one to Thetis this is one from Yubico and it has NFC or near field communication built in so it is another way of talking with your smartphone and it's one that I've used in the past and Yubico has been a uh, long time player in this market so this is going to be two different options to look at and where appropriate down the road we'll be doing some other videos showing some of the finer points of doing that so let's go ahead and switch over to setting up an sms message to save some time i've gone ahead and logged in to the namecheap account so what we'll do is you'll go once you've logged in you'll click on your name and profile and then under profile you'll click on security so we'll start by clicking on enable and we will enter something here and that should make everybody happy and you will want to make sure that you select the appropriate country code for your location otherwise it will complain and for some reason it wanted to overwrite that so Now, if I can enter in the right phone number here. Okay, and then the name chief password. Okay, now I should have a text message coming through on the phone here momentarily. And we will enter that code. And begins with a five fine at least it's handy that they tell you that because if you're getting multiple authentication trials at some point then having uh, knowing the code it should start with will help you uh, keep up with things and also never save that because that's going to be a one-time use code we'll click on save changes okay that's it that's all it takes to get things up and running so if if you are going to do this to a phone then you might want to consider getting like a google voice number and having it go to that and then forward the sms or text messages to your actual phone that way if something would happen to your primary phone then you would at least have an option of recovering that to switch to another phone so you're not totally dead in the water and trust me i've had that happen to me where i hadn't sent it through google voice and had a problem with the phone and so there was a couple of days I couldn't get in and I really didn't want to go replace the phone. Finally found it. Sorry, long story, but there's that's a good illustration why you want to do that. Okay, now we're going to move on to setting up the soft token. And if you haven't decided how you're going to proceed in the area, there's multiple clients available. There's the Google Authenticator. There's the Microsoft version. There is Authy. There's a whole 
assortment to go with. And if you'd like me to go in depth on some of those to kind of give you a better idea, please reach out to me in the comments and I'll be happy to get a video taken care of for you because I want to make this as easy as I can for you. So again, we're already in the name cheap profile area in security. So something I do want to mention is that there is, an, it's not a limitation, but this is a, an implementation decision that folks at Namecheap made, and this is not a criticism, just to let you know, where some of the two-factor options, you can stack them as far as I could have SMS, soft token, and hardware token. With Namecheap, you have to pick which one that you're going to use. So again, just an advisory so that you don't get surprised. So we will do the Authenticator app. We'll click Enable, and we will enter in the password. You will want to get these copied down. And if you're using Bitwarden for your password and two-factor management, or even if you're not, copy these because these are one-time codes that if you don't, if you're having a problem, say, with the soft token working, these are emergency backups. But again, keeping in mind, each time you use one of those, cross it off the list because you can never use it again. That's an additional safety precaution. So once you've got those copied off, then we'll click on Next. Now, there the... The QR code that's up here on the screen, you can use your, the, whatever app you want to. I would suggest that you take it to the next step and take a picture of it with your smartphone and then forward that out to Google Keep or wherever you're keeping that kind of thing so that if you have to reset up your process on a new phone, that you have everything you need to get it started. Because if you, even if you have your phone backed up, the file itself may not be backed up. So while we've been talking, I've already got it registered in the client. Then we'll, we'll enter a six-digit code. Oh, before we do that, if you are registering this on a desktop, obviously you're not going to have a phone. So you'll want to capture that sequence as well. And, and that will let you enter that on a desktop, copy and paste. So don't worry about trying to enter everything in. So 880... 037. It's validated that. So what we can do now, click sign out, log in. And sign in and continue. Now it should come up with the prompt for the one-time password. And we will go back over here. And now it is, let's see, 608269. Okay, and again, we're in, so, so you see how that works, and now what we need to do is go back down here to Profile, Security, and then you can see two-factor authentication. It's currently set to the one-time password, and that gets us back to where we were. So again, very straightforward, very easy to do. When you're setting up that new account for the smart home cloud service or device, please get a copy of my smart home device account checklist you see here on the screen. This will help make sure that everything gets written down that you entered to get that account created. The form will also serve as a backup copy when you get this entered into your password manager app. And if you're not already using a password manager app, please get one now and get started. Please click on the link in the YouTube description or podcast show notes to get that checklist. You will get subscribed to my email list in exchange for the checklist. I won't share, rent, or sell your information to anyone. Okay, now we're going to be doing this with the hardware token. And like I mentioned before, there's two different ones that, that I've got. I've actually got more, but some of them are pretty old and were a different standard. So to get this started, you will click on Enable. And we'll enter our name cheap password. Okay, again, with the backup codes, get those copied, put them in Bitwarden or whatever you're using for password manager. If you're switching over, say you were on soft token and you're now going to the hardware token, don't count on those codes staying the same. So you need to replace them. These are going to be unique to whatever method that you've gotten set up. So we've got those already copied off. We'll click on Next. Now, it asks you to give a name. and I'm going to call mine at this point going to say Thetis because I only got just the one Thetis token and we will click on register and it's already saying hey where's the token so let's go ahead and get this plugged in if I can get that in here it's there we 
go. And then the little button starts blinky. And allow the site to see the key because Namecheap needs to get something back so that they can verify it. Okay, it's successfully registered. You're good to go. So there is something I do want to point out. If you do have more than hardware, one hardware token, and this is something definitely is worth considering. They're not that expensive. You have one in an emergency kit that is separate from what you normally have with you. So you've always got the token somewhere that you can use. You can add a second token. So what we will do here is we'll just click under add a device and we will enter the name cheap password. Most of the services will let you do this. Some may not, but so I'm going to call this one Yubico because I'm going to use the little blue one that we mentioned earlier. So that's in there and then we will click on register. Now I've got it tap the little button on the Yubico. Yes to allow. Successfully registered. And now we've got everything. We've got two different tokens available to us. So it's never a bad thing to, to have that set up. So this really is probably one of the best examples of the different options that you have available. I wish they would support multiple methods where you could stock them, but I understand from a support standpoint, that's a little bit of a headache for them. But again, the more barriers you put in front of your login, the better it's going to protect you and encourage a would-be hacker intruder to move on to uh, easier, more low-hanging fruit. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you're just watching now or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on the like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe and enable notification. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.